Welcome to the WFN Real Road Trip. I'm Mark Melnick here at the Toronto Sportsman Show for 2008. We're standing in the Advanced Taxidermy booth where Sean Gallia is very proud of his works of art. I see it a different way. He's allowing monsters like this to return to the deep. There's a huge need for fish reproductions. Uh, first of all, uh, the beauty of them is that you can go fishing, take a, take, catch a fish, take a length measurement, a girth measurement of the fish that you caught, release it, and we can build you a fish reproduction exactly like the fish that you caught. So that the fish obviously gets to live and uh, you end up with your trophy as well. The best case scenario, when a, when a fellow catches a fish and he releases it, um, the, to get a very accurate replica of the fish you caught, I would like to have a length measurement a girth measurement and a photo of the fish. I don't need a bunch of photos, just one good, clean, crisp photo of the fish. And that's gonna tell me a lot. It's gonna tell me the obvious, if, if it's a male or female, if it's a girthy fish, consistently girthy, or if it's just a slender fish. Uh, and then again, when we go through the painting process, that photo is used right to the very end. So if it's a very bright colored fish with lots of um, iridescence and, and littered with spots, that your fish will come back looking just like that photo. I think there's a lot of importance in, in, in the fish reproduction based on the fact that fish are being released. Um, traditionally, people are, are, are catching fish that they would consider a trophy, and, and in most cases, or at one time, they'd be killing that fish and having it mounted. Uh, with our studio, because we're encouraging the fish to be released, that brute stock, that fish that is, that is there to spawn, that's the sole purpose, is being able to continue doing that. Uh, you're, you're, you're capturing the memory, and you're releasing the fish, and the fish continues to spawn. First of all, when you're getting a skin mount done of a fish, we're, make, we're taking the skin off the carcass, we're carving a styrofoam mannequin, we're stretching the skin over the, man, the mannequin, we're allowing the skin to dry, and then we rebuild any shrunken areas, and then from that we go ahead and paint on top of the skin. Well, first of all, it's impossible to carve a styrofoam mannequin to look exactly like what a fish did. So you get kind of just a, a base look. It doesn't have the, this, the details, the muscle structure or the, or the tones. And then when we're painting on top of skin, skin deteriorates. So we're physically painting on a skin that is, that is deteriorating as we're painting on it. And, and over time, it, it takes on moisture and it starts to, to develop cracks and, and falls apart. Whereas the reproductions with the method that we're using, we're, we've taken a real fish initially and we're taking a liquid molding material. We pour it right over the fish and uh, it basically flash cures and it, and it picks up extreme detail. The molding material is the same viscosity as water, so if you can imagine pouring water over a fish, it flows into every little nook and cranny. When we peel that off, um, we've picked up so much detail. In fact, we've had clients notice fingerprints in the actual fish from them mishandling the fish originally. Every piece is very unique and very different, and this keeps the client very happy. Uh, he's able to go to his buddy's house that got a fish done by us as well, and feel very confident that he's not getting a cookie cutter fish. He's not getting the same fish that his buddy got set up in the same type of habitat. They're all very unique. And uh, we're very careful with that. And we make sure that each piece has a, a very unique look and feel to it. So the clients, uh, they become very happy when, when they receive that fish.